Good morning. It's a couple minutes early, but I figured I'd go ahead and jump on, so give some time for other people to follow suit. volume. There we go. All right, four people. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am doing the bubble technique today, um, which is going to be kind of messy, so I'm going to work through it. Um, this is my uh, least amount of dress. I mean, I'm wearing, I'm wearing leggings, and I did my hair, but check out my, got to keep my feet warm, so I got these giant cozy socks on, because um, we have all hardwoods, or whatever, laminate flooring around. Um, and I got my coffee today. So how's everybody doing? Um, I posted on Facebook yesterday um, about the, pay, the paint that I've been talking about. Um, that's just a standard craft paint if you're just following around with crafts um, and not doing it on pottery. This paint um, type of paint will work great. I think Walmart, I've got the apple barrel kind from Walmart. Um, there's some glares going on today. Um, and I had been saying it was like 99 cents, but I was at Walmart yesterday. It was actually 50 cents a bottle. Um, and the reason I'm talking about Walmart so much is um, if you are uh, grocery shopping or whatever, that's, you know, kind of like a one-stop shop, so you don't have to go different places. Um, so kind of limit your exposure, um, even though, like, Walmart is one massive exposure. Um, so, I'm going to first and foremost do, uh, oh, actually, wait, I'm going to show you guys some, um, some pictures real quick. So if you do any of, um... If you do any of the things we're talking about go ahead and post them on Facebook your finished product um, I was just gonna show you um, I found this one yesterday on Facebook so this is kind of what I was talking about for kind of more of like an Easter theme um, they just did the tape on the door with the cross in the middle and then painted it all in um, and then I've got another one Kimberly um, actually posted this on our Facebook page of um, good grip there um, of what they did at home, so that's awesome. So yeah, post your stuff. Um, Lail was showing her um, awesome artwork. Sorry, I'm trying to not have a glare as much as possible, but we've got some Calvin and Hobbes action going on. That's gonna be an awesome one um, when it's fired. Can't wait for that. And then um, some people are just posting, this is also from Lail, but I've got a couple other ones. People just posting their to-go kits, working on um, at home. So that's just a fun way to stay connected. I know when we're at the shop, we have tables kind of chit chat be between each other. So, um, so it's just a way to, um, stay connected in that way. How many times can I say away? Um, so then I know, I don't know if Becky's watching. Um, she's been watching, but, um, here's the finished product from yesterday. Um, all dry. It's not necessary. It's not fired yet, obviously, cause it's still really, um, matte and, um, I didn't take it. I did go to the shop yesterday and, um, started the kiln but I didn't take I forgot that one at home so obviously it's um, not fired yet but I will show it when it's finished I just wanted to show what it looked like um, one more sip of coffee I just we just had a zoom meeting merchant coffee so on Friday mornings um, good morning Nicole on Friday mornings at 8 30 um, we rotate between coffee shops um, whenever you're available to be there uh, the shop owners or people that are connected to downtown Centralia. Um, so we just did a Zoom meeting or Zoom virtual coffee um, from our couches and offices and whatnot. Um, and I had not done my hair or anything. I was just like, hey guys. But I do have um, Ceramic Jam. So this is when I went in um, September to California. I think it was September, it might've been October. I think it was October actually, to Ceramic Jam for Bisque Imports um, conference. And so um, they've been awesome. All of our vendors have been super awesome on staying connected and checking in and making sure offering like shipping and discounts and stuff to just kind of help us get through this time. Um, so today is the bubble technique. So I'm going to start doing it on um, pottery 
and then I'm going to progress. So I have never tried it without um, not using glaze, which is why I'm going to show it on pottery first because um, I know it's going to work. Um, it's really messy, so you can see how messy it is. It's probably going to be a better thing to do maybe if you're outside on the kitchen floor or something. Just lay something down in case it gets out of control, especially if you're working with um, kids that um, just might have it everywhere. Um, so I'm also, after I do the pottery part, um, the pottery version, I'm going to do it with some acrylic craft paint um, just for funsies to see if it works and hopefully it does. It should, um, but um, it's going to be a complete experiment. And then I'm also, I picked this up at Walmart yesterday too, um, which is, it was like $1.98 or something like that. Um, so I thought I might try mixing some just washable watercolors and trying the same thing. So it's just a fun project, um, kind of a science experiment. Um, so, but I am I'm probably not going to flip you down today um, as much as I have been. I'm going to see how this works. So I'm actually using a big tub, so I am um, working on my dining room table. And <laughs> I'm going to use a toilet paper tube um, and just set it in there. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. Okay, so, um, hello, mama. Um, so um, I'm going to show the stuff. I've been obviously continuously showing everything that we've needed. <laughs> so this morning I completely um, posted my uh, supply list to the wrong Instagram and Facebook page. So everything went to my personal one, um, which is why it was kind of a last minute because I couldn't figure out why I was getting so many likes on Instagram on my personal page and then was like, oh hey. Um, so that was kind of a last minute, but I had shown you. Um, we're going to be using some dish soap and some a Dixie cup or similar size little tiny um, doodad jar um, and then I've got straws so these are just disposable ones which we carry at the shop for this technique so if you um, want to do this at the shop all this stuff's available if you learn this now and you're like hey I want to do bubble technique or something like that um, good morning Sarah um, so, and then I've just grabbed this as a reusable sparkly, can you see the sparkles? Not like you care, but um, sparkly, um, just a plastic reusable straw that I use, like in jars and whatnot when I'm drinking, um, when I'm drinking water. <laughs> um, so those things you need. Um, and then, oh, what don't I have? A, a stir stick. So I'm gonna just use one of these skewers, like every day this week I've used a skewer for something, um, except for yesterday. Um, so the skewer, just that's just going to be mixing our concoction, and then I grabbed just a little bit of water. This is way more water than you actually need, um, but because I'm doing like three different things, um, I just grabbed some water. Um, I know, Nicole, actually I do care about sparkles a lot too, but um, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm trying to um, make this video shorter than yesterday because yesterday was really long and kind of rambly. Um, so I'm going to show you the samples again. Um, so this is the fish sample that uh, Amanda had done. Um, and so you can see, I think, if I show you this real close. So this is actually um, the mint turquoise color. So the really light green and then the 38 over the top. Um, so it kind of has a different texture. We maybe I told her to do it that way, but we probably should have flip-flopped it. So done the darker color on the bottom and the lighter color on top. Um, and then this is just one coat, obviously, um, per each color. So you can see how um, the full coverage part, like there's, it's obviously darker. That's the, the beauty of the sparkles, or it's sparkles. Now I got sparkles on my mind. Um, the beauty of the bubbles. Um, here's another sample, um, red, just red. Same thing, that's the same as this, obviously. I've got all my colors going on. Um, and then this is just using the stamp we use at the shop on bags and different things. So that is um, basically what I'm going to be showing today. Um, I'm going to do the the demo on an egg. Whoop. Here guys, my area around me is a complete disaster. Um, so just the ceramic egg. Um, if this works with um, the acrylic paint, you can probably do this on a regular hard-boiled egg for Easter. Um, I have an egg. It's not hard-boiled. Maybe I'll try. Maybe that'll be my demo. Um, they're also from a guy that Travis works with, so 
I'm not even sure if we have white eggs, but I have dark colored paint, so we could try it on a brown egg, if that's what I have. Um, okay, grabbing this guy. So this is um, a sample of an egg that I have at the shop. Um, so this obviously is dipped in the clear glaze and glossy, um, but this isn't always a good background idea for doing things at the shop. Um, so this is, I'll show you this fish again. So you did the whole, we did the whole thing, or Amanda did the whole thing with the bubble technique, and then went back and just added some, um, some details, like the lips and the eyes that are so pretty. Um, another thing you could do, like um, what we did yesterday, was is mask off, like maybe the top fins or something, and do different bubbles on top, um, or down below, or in the middle. Um, so you can do masking tape, and then, um, actually that's what happened here or not happen, but that's what I did here. So for all my samples, um, I tried to stay like with a consistent um, branding type situation. Um, so I just put tape across at the same level on all of them and then did the bubbles on top. So um, that's how, if you wanna mask it and only have bubbles in certain areas. Again, the masking works really well on um, flatter, flat, flatter surfaces. <laughs> um, so, and then Mine's gonna have cut off because the way I'm gonna hold it up so you guys can see it is um, on this toilet paper tube. Another thing you wanna do too is have it sit, maybe, hang on, maybe I'll have it sit, will it sit on this? Guys, guys, maybe I'll have it sit on this. Um, so it's taller. So another thing you wanna have is kind of for it to be elevated out of the bubble solution once you blow the bubbles um, because you don't want it to be sitting in that liquid around it because that's going to defeat the purpose. Um, you want um, you want a good mixture of soap and glaze and water. Um, I usually tell people one part uh, soap, two parts glaze, and one and three parts water. Um, I, it's kind of more of an eyeball-y thing once you start doing it because um, the more the drier the bubbles are, the better they're gonna like sit up and have bigger ones. The more the more liquid wet you have going on, they're just gonna kind of run down, and then you won't get as good of a um, a coverage. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, take my Dixie cup and my soap and just put just a little bit in there. Um, so really, oops, really, that's not a lot. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna put a little bit more that was so um, I usually tell people like a pea size or so um, and then what color Easter egg do we want guys do, 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 do. let's do um, I don't know I guess I'm doing 10 cuz 10 is 10 is our color of the week from yesterday and the day before so um, I'm gonna add in just some glaze so there's kind of my mixture so far. And then just a little bit of water. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hold this up, but oh, guess what, I can do this. So um, there's my mixture. And then um, I'm just taking the back end of the skewer and stirring this up. And I just want it all, so it will settle um, if, you, if you don't mix it all or if you don't do this right away, it will settle. Um, and separate. So you want to uh, make sure you consistent, like keep it mixed up. I'm gonna, I, was, I watched my video from yesterday and I noticed there was a huge glare on the white paper. So um, there, I think that's gonna work. Um, so I have it sitting up out of the tote, but it's in the tote. So when bubbles start going everywhere, um, you can, um, you'll still be able to see what's going on. Um, so I'm gonna put that down. And then um, I'm just gonna take one of the straws. So I'm gonna move my chair out of the way. So you guys can probably see the mess that is on the bottom shelf. <laughs> um, so you can also stir. So what you don't wanna do is suck the glaze, the glaze um, solution up, but you wanna start blowing bubbles like, here, let me tilt this up a little bit. Blowing bubbles like, um, let me see. Now you can't see the egg. You guys, this is a hot mess going on. What's the glare coming from? 
that. Okay, let me turn this light off real quick. Is that a little better? Um, okay, so, um, what was I saying? Oh, you want to blow bubbles similar to like when you're blowing bubbles in um, milk, you know, when you're a kid and you're blowing bubbles and it's cascading over and you um, are getting in trouble for making a mess everywhere. That's what you want to do. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and start blowing the bubbles and you don't want to dump it out because then you're going to get the run just off. So you want, you literally want to hold your cup as upright as possible while you're doing this and then kind of like move around the egg or whatever you're using. Um, to get f as much coverage as you can. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Alright, so mine was probably a little bit more wet than it needed to be. Um, you can see a little bit better on that side. I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm probably just going to dump some of this out so it's not as liquidy. And so, this, again, you can practice on something different um, before you do it on your egg. Um, probably also because I have my egg, like I'm doing it on this, obviously it's going to hit the top and just run down the sides. Um, so I'm going to go again and try to get on the edges a little bit. Um, it's always really e helpful if you have a friend helping you so they can move the piece around. So it's kind of hard for me to get all the way around the outside edges with um, by myself. And another thing, I don't know what's happening. I'm probably mixing it too much just because I'm doing something with my hands while I'm doing this. The littler bubbles, you don't necessarily want. That's not going to give you... Um, well, let me show you. Oops, I've got stuff everywhere. Um, so that's going to give you more of this... Um, the, defined texture or um, not as much like I particularly prefer like the bigger bubbles so if you see the little bubbles um, that's not necessarily what you want and that's why I was um, blowing so the bigger bubbles are coming out on top all right so if you get bubbles resting on it like that, you that's pretty much what you want. Um, you want to just let them hang out there and pop um, on their own, because if you try to pop them, it's not going to be as a natural looking bubble as it is if it's going to pop on its own. And with the glaze too, um, see I've got a bunch of little bubbles down there. Um, with the glaze too, you um, aren't really going to see the texture as much, because if you've been to the shop and you've got... Um, if you've, I'm gonna flip you back up for a second. Okay, I'm out of breath from blowing so many bubbles. Um, okay, I'm gonna sit back down, do all the things real quick. Um, so three to four coats. People always ask if that's enough um, coverage and there's really not, um, it's not really easy to tell between the one coat and the three coats. Obviously if there's like um, brush strokiness um, and you see through the three coats um, or through, through like, oh my gosh, what am I saying guys? Uh, let me show you this. So um, if there's actually like areas where you see um, white space, you know obviously you don't have enough coverage. But if you have a full coverage one coat um, and then a full coverage second coat, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference on, by looking at it, say, oh, I can tell that's a one coat versus a two coat. Um, because once the coverage is there, it's gonna be after it fires, so based on kind of the, the texture of the layering, kind of like paint dries. Um, so if you want, uh, if you're painting something like a standard, like a wall or something like that, and you have one coat, um, once it dries, it's going to be the same color as the other, the, if you do two coats, unless you kind of, once it dries, you can, may, sometimes can see like there's more of a translucency. So that's a word, dude. I just like threw out that big word for you. Um, okay, so... So that's what I'm saying. Like up here, right here, even though it looks pretty solid, um, there you can still see a little bit the texture of the bubbles. Um, so you actually will see some of that depth, um, similar to this. So like some of the areas where um, it's more concentrated, right in here, it probably looked more like that um, the more solid coverage areas. 
and um, but once it fired you see the texture so um, that's one of the reasons it's kind of hard at the shop when people are asking how good um, if they need another coat and I, I usually tell people I mean you can put on too many coats but it has to be pretty thick coats um, but I usually tell people if I'm just standard painting um, I put on an extra coat just for an insurance coat um, so anyways that's the bubble technique um, I can go back and do like a lighter color if I want to um, and this will happen too so I don't focus focus can you see this I'm using my hair as a background um, so those are just still little bubbles waiting to pop and those are completely fine like we can dip this now in the clear glaze throw it in the kiln and it will um, it'll do more of like this this look here um, so that is the bubble technique on pottery. Um, another thing you want to think about is um, I could to do it on like a dish like this or the inside of a bowl. Um, you're gonna want it's gonna be more concentrated and more liquidy down inside, just because it's like catching that. Um, so it's probably better to do something like that on the outside, um, or else you'll get more of like a solid coverage on the inside. Um, so. That's the pottery version. Let's move on, unless anybody wants to see more of the pottery version. But we're gonna do some experiment. Oh, I'm gonna go grab an egg. Um, hang on, I'm gonna have some water first. Coffee, not water. Um, I'm gonna go grab an egg, a regular egg, out of my refrigerator real quick. I'll be right back. So, I grabbed the lightest color egg I have, which is um, tan, I guess. I'm going to try to set it on this cap. Okay, it's doing this. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get another Dixie cup and a color. So, let's do purple. Actually, let's do dark blue because dark blue and orangey tannish color are complementary, so that'll look better, um, hopefully. Um, this one's gonna be the mess. So I'm going to, there's my paint, and here's a little bit of water, and here's some soap. All right. So, science experiment time! If you have one of these tubs at home, this is a great thing. Great thing way to use it. Um, that way it just catches everything. Um, if you have like kids paint, like washable tempera type stuff, that's what I would recommend using. Um, but I don't. I went to Walmart yesterday to see if I could find some for some of these samples, but they don't have any unless I didn't look in the right spot, which is completely possible. Um, okay, and a straw. So let's try this. Let's see, I'm gonna tilt you down a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna stand up again because this is stressing me out. Okay, deep breath, here we go. might be too wet like the the liquid paint might be too wet because it's gonna be a little bit runnier than glaze okay let's let's see let's see actually next maybe the egg thing doesn't work or practice on an egg before you or practice on something else before you do the egg um, I'm gonna try it on my notebook <clears throat> hang on and do it on a flat surface. I'm gonna just lay it like, like so, maybe. Okay, try it on a flat surface. Here's my concoction. I just stir out of habit. Okay, 
That's good enough, guys. We're gonna let that, oops, we're getting, we're doing this all over the place. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. I think it's gonna work. Um, we're not gonna let it dry, but we're gonna let the bubbles pop naturally and um, see if that works. And then I'm gonna try it out after we do that because I need to flip my page um, or just let this bubble settle and then I'll just tear that one off maybe. Um, I'm gonna try it with the watercolor paints because that's probably gonna be the most kid friendly because I have, um, what do I have? Washable watercolors. Um, so my, my only concern with watercolors and that's kind of watercolor, like their, um, hang on, their general thing is they're always a little bit more pastel. So um, I'm gonna go wash my hand off real quick because I have paint on it now and it's not just like glaze. So if I touch something, I'm gonna be getting blue um, fingerprints everywhere. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I don't know if you could hear me running. I watched my video yesterday and when I left to go get whatever I went to go get, I literally could hear myself shuffling around, which was, you know, whatever. But, um, so these bubbles, I'm gonna tilt you down so you can see my face and the bubbles at the same time. They are popping and they're, they are leaving a pretty cool texture. Um, kind of like amoebas, is that a thing? I think it's a thing. Um, so this would be a fun thing to do, like, um, a kid's project is like blow the bubbles obviously you can't control the shape that well but now that they pop down and once they draw dry um, you can make little faces and antennas and legs like this one's kind of like an ant or something like that um, <laughs> just a random idea um, that's apparently what I've been full of the last couple days because every time I come up with something I just say it's a random idea so um, and I think if you were to like use a bigger container, you might get bigger bubbles if you were using like a bigger space. Um, so yeah, I'm um, these are almost done popping, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to do, just move it like this and see if we can let it dry a little bit. And then um, just try the watercolor on a regular piece of paper. Okay, I'm gonna flip you back up real quick. I have to figure out how to, I wonder if I even need, I have this random egg just laying in this. Okay, I'm just gonna try it on the flat surface, I think. So, Dixie cup and water. So, um, I haven't even opened these yet, okay. There's no child safety lock, cause it takes, you know, takes me a minute with that type of stuff. Um, so, I'm going to just use, I guess, I guess the red here. Um, and I'm going to just get as much of the paint color into the Dixie cup. I may or may, may not mix this one with a bunch of water. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. If you have random, um, uh, watercolor set at home, I'm just, um, dipping and dipping and dipping. Like I said, this one's not going to be as vibrant, but still, it's still a fun project for a kid or um, maybe like a background. This would be really pretty. Maybe if you were to do like, um, actually, I'm going to need more water because I need more water to have the bubbles come out. So glad I talked myself through this because, like, again, trying this at home for the first time on live Facebook, which is a little bit scary. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add my soap now. So that's what I'm working with at this moment. Um, I'm mixing that up and I'm gonna, I don't know, I probably shouldn't have mixed that with the brush because now I'm displacing some of my soap. Um, pour in and just a smidge of water. So it's definitely gonna be tinted. Um, so I'm going to try to mix in a little bit more paint. And I'm just kind of brushing that off on the side actually. So I'm not, so I can keep as much of the concentration of paint without pulling any out with my paintbrush. Um, okay. 
That's probably enough for what we need right now. Um, and now I'm gonna grab another straw. I'm not using my reusable one because I've switched straws so many times. Um, all right, so here we go. I'm gonna tilt you down just a little bit, and move this guy out of the way. Um, and move this up here. Can you guys see this okay? Nothing's happening yet, obviously. So here we go. All right, there we go. A bubble situation going on. Um, I should have grabbed a rag. Here, I got one right here. Okay, so um, that's gonna sit there and dry. And let me grab the one from before, which is not dry yet all the way. I'm gonna turn the light back on. Um, and do that. Flip you up so um, you can see me. Do you guys wanna see me or do you guys wanna watch these bubbles pop? Um, and I'm gonna grab this real quick. So this did essentially what it was supposed to do. Um, it's still drying, so I don't wanna tilt it too much, but you can see, I think this is gonna dry here. This is a giant puddle, and there's a couple puddles right there if I tilt it. Um, so you can see where some areas it's more, um, there was more liquid that came out. And, um, but essentially with the acrylic paints, it did what it was supposed to do. Um, you can try this on an egg if you want. I, my egg, I don't, I don't know. It came out of the refrigerator, so it probably had some cond condensation on it, which um, also was mixing with the paint to cr uh, create more liquid. Um, but yeah, I think this is kind of fun. Whoop, we're running. We're running. Um, copy paper maybe wasn't the best idea for the watercolors, so you might want to use something a little bit more substantial because it's still doing a a thing like we're getting where the bubbles are but really the copy paper is so light it's just um, running all together um, and not really creating that definition where the bubbles are thicker um, but just a kind of different technique so yeah um, that is the bubble technique this video was way quicker than yesterday um, does anybody have any questions or comments um, today's Friday so that means I will be back on Tuesday for some more of these tutorials. And um, if you guys want to see something specific, let me know. If you try any of these out, like the dot mandala or the masking tape or whatever, post it on our Facebook page, Black Dog Pottery, because um, I love to see what you guys are all working on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think that's all I have, really. You guys have a great awesome weekend. Um, all these videos get saved and put on my Facebook page. So if you, um, want to go back and watch them, um, they are available. Or, um, if you want to follow along with some of the steps, or if you don't remember, um, some, one of the steps, go ahead and go back and watch it or message me on Facebook. Um, I do want to make it clear because I had somebody ask about the paint. So I, I talk about the acrylic paints because if you didn't get a, a pottery kit, um, and aren't doing this on pottery, I want to make it available for people that um, are at home and just looking for craft projects. So the acrylic paints I talk about are available um, to do some of these things that are not on pottery. That's not saying if you have ceramics you can't use the acrylics on pottery, but you cannot bring them back to the shop to be fired. Acrylics will do a couple things in the kiln, burn out um, completely, similar to Sharpie, depending on what color it is and what um, goes into that um, or just change a completely weird different color. Um, some have been known to, um, depending on how covered, like if you have a full coverage of acrylic, they could break um, just because there's no airflow through certain temperatures and then um, they could break, um, which would damage my kiln, other people's projects. Um, if you do have ceramics that are not um, going to be food, like you're not going to eat on them or anything like that, Oh my gosh, I almost pushed my glasses up. <laughs> um, you can um, you can paint with acrylics. If you want kind of a shiny look on it, you can um, give, just give it a spray with um, a sealer. Uh, I 
you can use the acrylic paints on them. Uh, you can usually also buy, um, you can usually also buy, uh, acrylic stain and different acrylic paints that are specific for pottery. Um, but that's not saying you can't use these um, cheaper acrylic paints on pottery if you're just looking for a way to paint it. Um, but any pottery that you bring back to the shop to be fired has to be painted with our glazes. Um, so yes, I think that's it for today. Um, I hope everybody has a really safe weekend. Um, stay in and stay healthy. Um, and so have a great afternoon, guys. I think it's afternoon, it's not even afternoon yet. Um, it is 1130. So I hope everybody has a great day. I will see you next week. If you guys have specific things you want to see for next week, let me know. I haven't put together all of my little days um, on what I'm doing what yet. Um, so give a shout out and um, let us know and post your pictures of what you're doing at home. Bye!